Hello and a very warm welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Smart24 TV and we drive your business. My name is Anthony and on The Point we analyze economic policy. And of course you can catch us live on GoTV and DSTV channels 302 and channel 372 respectively. You can also catch us live on our YouTube live stream at Smart24 TV Live for all your latest business content. Now, today we discuss, of course, another very valuable discussion when it comes to taxation. When you talk about the value added tax or VAT, this is a tax that is governed by the VAT or Value Added Tax Act of Uganda and it's administered by the Uganda Revenue Authority. A VAT is charged at a rate of 18% of uh, supplies, goods, and services, supplies of goods and services in Uganda. However, we do have categories of goods that are vatable or those that can be charged VAT and those that are not charged VAT or that are exempted. Today, we delve into what value-added tax really is, how you can register your business for value-added tax, and also what is exempt for value-added tax. And uh, to join me on this discussion is none other than Mr. Robert Wamala Lumanika, who is the Manager Public Relations and Communication at the Uganda Revenue Authority. Welcome back, Mr. Lumanika. Well, thank you, Anthony, and uh, I'm so glad to be at Smart24 once again. Of course, uh, speaking to our dear taxpayers, mm -hmm who happen to be our clients because uh, as a tax body, our major role or mandate is to collect central government taxes, to administer the tax laws, enforce them, advise the Minister of Finance on matters of policy, but also educate the public. Absolutely. So I'm very happy that uh, you've given me an opportunity once again to speak to the public about this very mm. important matter Mm. which by the way many people uh, kind of do not take very seriously mm. yet it is very impactful when it comes to business absolutely you're most welcome back now let's talk about value added tax this sounds so cliche but uh, to this day some people don't understand exactly what value added tax is so to begin our conversation what does value added tax entail because it looks like everyone should be concerned about this particular one um, value added tax those are three words. Value, added, tax. Tax, of course, you know, it is a compulsory payment that we actually mm -hmm. uh, collect as the URA and you will remit to the Ministry of Finance or Government to mm -hmm. run the social, economic, and other affairs of the state. Value. Now, when you add value, okay, it means that you are making a certain item, if it is a good, mm -hmm. to have... Uh, I don't want to use a word to define a word, mm. but you're adding on value to a certain item. Quality, probably. Quality, yeah. yeah, it can be quality improvement, it can be complete processing. change, it mm. can be processing, mm. it can be a complete turn of mm. something into another product. It can actually be in distribution, mm. that for you, the value you're adding on to a pen that is manufactured by a nice house of plastics is to transport it to Chiboga, okay? You're already giving it more value because by incurring the transport cost in the distribution, you're actually adding value. Mm. So going to your question, value added tax comes from those three words. We're talking about value added onto a particular good or service, mm. okay, to be consumed by someone else. And then that is where the URA comes in to say, okay, for the value added, we are asking for a tax. Mm. Now, just know that value-added tax is collected on goods and services. So sometimes when I, when I, I meet my colleagues, you know I love going downtown. Mm. When I meet my colleagues and they're talking about URA is charging a lot of tax on us, and then you ask them, make mention of some of the taxes that we're tra charging, they will tell you VAT. Mm. It's always the first one. <laughs> VAT is killing us. Yes. But value-added tax is mm. collected on products, on goods and services. Now, basically, it means that this is a tax 
that an individual is supposed to account for, but it is not charged on the individual. Mm -hmm. It is charged on the good or service. Now, for example, if uh, you decide and say, I'm going to sell my merchandise, I will maybe pick them from a wholesale shop in Chikubo, I take them to Namayumba. That is where I'm going to sell them. Mm -hmm. It means that in the process of you packaging these items to Namayumba, to distribute them that side, you have added value. And it is now that component that we are looking at as tax. If it is a good and you're manufacturing, you're turning mangoes into juice, it means that you're adding value to the mango. Now, by adding value to the mango, you produce the juice. Definitely, when you add value to something, by the way, to show that value has been added, that item that you've added value on will not cost the same amount of money like the original item. In the raw version. I exactly. Yeah. So, even if it is in the distribution, mm. it will not cost a pen in Kampala, will not cost the same amount as a pen in Guru. That's right. It means that you are adding on value and making that item have the value that you've added on. Meaning that you are is looking at the value that you have added on the item to collect a tax. So, value added tax is charged on products or goods and services. Mm. Value added tax was introduced, I think it was 1997. For those who were born, I know Tony probably by that time, were born? <laughs> Just a few years a ago, few I years. was born oh after. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> now, those who were born in 1997 and below, mm. there used to be a tax called uh, the sales tax and the commercial transaction levy. These were two taxes. One was uh, taxing goods, tangible goods, the ones that we can touch and feel. That was the sales tax. Mm -hmm. Then the CTL, they used to abbreviate it as CTL. It was on services. Mm -hmm. Now, government combined the two and came up with value added tax. Basically, to define it, it is a tax charged on the value added in the production, in the distribution of items. It is charged on products or goods and services. It is not charged on the individual. The individual is only meant to account for it because it is the individual that sells. Mm. So you're meant to account for the value added tax on the goods and services. And it is collected in a chain mm. of production and distribution. Meaning that when you're not in the chain of production, you're not in the chain of distribution, you may not meet the added tax. The other aspect about it is that it is paid ultimately by the final consumer because we collect it in different stages. Mm. Like I'll explain later, uh, you get stage one and, and in that stage someone is producing mm. or someone is adding value to the mango. Now, when you add value to the mango, you package it into juice. So at the point of selling it to a wholesaler, mm. the manufacturer puts in the value added tax element because there is value added. So the 18% is put on that amount. So the wholesaler buys it with the 18% yes. on. Now the wholesaler is selling it to the retailer. He also charges. So at the, point, yeah. at the point of the wholesaler mm. selling this item to the retailer, they are charging the retailer 18% on top of the price that that product would actually cost. Mm. It means that the wholesale look at the value added tax, or what we call the input tax, on the items that they have used or incurred in selling this particular item, mm. compute value added tax on it and put it aside as the input tax. And then when they sell to the retailer, they charge the 18%, which is value added tax. So what they do at that point they will get the value added tax or the output tax, the tax which they have charged the retailer, mm. subtract it, get the tax that they have been cut, sorry, subtract it from the tax they are going to charge the retailer, and the difference is what they pay to URA. So the retailer also gets the item with the value added tax of 18%, sell it to the final, final consumer, consumer. Yeah. with the 18% component. So what the retailer does, they will get the value added tax they incurred mm. at the point of getting this item from the wholesaler, mm. subtract it from the value added tax that they have charged the retailer, and the difference is what they pay to URA. So you see, it is a multi stage tax that is collected at different stages depending mm. on your input 
and the output. output. But ultimately, mm -hmm. the final consumer, me and you, when you go and buy a bottle of water, you take up the you whole take cost. Up the whole cost. <laughs> but so, it sounds like the difference, because you, you talked about the input tax. So I'm yes. making juice. I have a supply of bottles. He pays VAT. Yes. There's VAT on that bottle. Yes. Then I have a supply of water, let's say. I pay VAT. Yes. Then I have a supply of maybe flavors. I pay VAT. Yes. And then now at the point of selling to the wholesaler, yes. who pays all the other VATs? Because it, so it sounds like you're only paying the VAT now to the point where you have selling the juice. You see, at the point of selling it to the final consumer, the mm. final consumer pays the whole sum because at that point, the entire 18% rests with the final consumer. But in this stage of production, like you said, mm. when I get... You know, VAT is, is very interesting, a tax. Mm. When I get, let me give you a very clear analogy. Mm. I have a factory that is manufacturing juice. Mm. Now, this factory, for me to operate, mm. I'm paying rent because some people pay rent by the to to, to, to rent these factories and, and places. That's places. right. So, I'm paying rent, which has VAT on it. I'm paying uh, packaging material. Rent has VAT. Yes. Besides rent or tax, this is... As long as, you see, as long as mm. you're letting out a commercial building, the commercial building will have VAT. Oh. You know, VAT is... Okay, we have three sections. We have three, uh, a number of schedules, but let me just make mention of three schedules. Mm. There is the first schedule that has the listed institutions. Those are institutions that are not charged VAT. Mm. So when such an institution purchases from you, even when you charge it VAT, it will claim the entire VAT because by law, institutions like the African Development Bank, mm. those international agencies, Aga Khan Foundation, they're not charged VAT. We have schedule two that has the exempt supplies. Mm. Exempt, I mean, items that are not charged VAT at all. So, and then we have Schedule 3 that has the vatable supplies, but at 0%, what we call zero-rated zero rated goods. Okay. Now, those are very important sections. Why? So when each and every good and service falls in either of these? No. Not all? Not all. Okay. That is why they are distinct. Mm. That if a good does not fall in the second schedule, mm. it means that good is a taxable good. It is a vatable good. Okay. So, by elimination, mm. if what you are dealing in is not in the... It's not zero-rated? For zero-rated, it is charged the VAT, but at a rate of zero. Zero percent. It but basically VAT. means that, yes, okay. it is charged VAT, but at a rate of zero. Okay. Now, what does that means? When you charge VAT at a rate of zero, government is looking at you, who is dealing in that item, whose VAT is at zero percent, to claim all the input VAT mm. that you incur. Of course, this is done sometimes to, 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 to ensure that uh, probably uh, dealers in such items, okay, mm. uh, government has an intention, sometimes when it is collecting. So for example, all exports are zero rated. To what promote exportation. Exactly. Mm. Such that when you're selling an item, you don't have a tax on top of what you're selling. Such that you can get more money from that other place. Where but the input tax is not taken away. In other words, what you're buying from maybe the raw material and so it on. It is not taken it's away. It's not taken away. But so you pay the input you. tax. Okay. It is given back to you. How? When you file a return, you show the input, mm. VAT that you have incurred on all these packaging materials and so on. And then the output will basically be zero because mm. any number multiplied by zero is zero. Yeah. So it means that all this input that mm -hmm. you are claiming back mm -hmm. okay and using it to manufacture more, more yeah. when you look at items like uh, scholastic items mm -hmm. government is looking at promoting the education sector so it will exempt it will it will have that at a rate of zero mm -hmm. on supplies educational materials yeah. okay and many other items so what i was trying to say is that if you find that your item is not in the exempt schedule mm -hmm. It means that that item is invertible. So, mm. why you asked that is rent invertible? When you go to the schedule, the schedule spells out the number of items that are within the exempt schedule. Okay? 
Maybe you'll allow me to make mention of some of them. That's right. For example, crop extension services. Remember I said VAT is a tax on goods and services. Mm. Crop extension services, irrigation, okay? Mm. Most of those inputs that are used in uh, agriculture are exempt. Uh, talk of the knapsack sprayers, talk of educational services, mm. talk of um, social welfare services, talk of um, dental, uh, medicines. Health and life insurance. Exactly, life insurance, mm. ambulances, yep. talk of uh, maternity kits, uh, contraceptives, talk of unimproved land, financial services, the number of services and mm. goods that are not charged VAT, mm. barrier and cremation services, there's no you can charge eh, mm. VAT when someone is actually trying to make uh, the, 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 the tub of someone, you, then you, you want to charge uh, VAT on it. Mm. So many of those items are not charged VAT, so they are exempt supplies. Now that means that if you deal in those items, mm. okay, you will not pay VAT on them. When an item does not fall there, mm. you go straight to the third shade and see. Is it vatable but at a rate of zero? Because even zero rated items are vatable items but at a rate of zero percent. Zero percent. Mm. These include educational materials, seeds, fertilizers, pesticides. Mm. When you talk about drugs manufactured in Uganda, international transport, I already talked about exports, mm. sanitary towels, cereals, those ones are vatable but at a rate of zero. Now, what's the difference between the zero rated and the exempt? Is it what I said about the input tax? For zero rating, do they pay the input tax? What happens with the zero the, the exempt? Yes. When you did an exempt... Because you said you pay back when it's exempt, when it's under the exempt. When, 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 you, when, when your item is under exempt mm. supplies, it means that you will not be charged that. Mm. But also, it means that you will not claim input VAT. Oh, okay. That is what it means. Okay. You will not be charged mm. VAT, but you will also not claim input VAT. But when you are in a zero rate, it means that you will charge VAT at 0%, but you will be allowed to claim all the input VAT. Mm. By input, I mean the things that you use okay. in the production or distribution. Because you'll find someone telling you that, you know, like the analogy I gave you of a juice manufacturer, mm. they incur VAT on the packaging material, they incur VAT on the rent, mm. they will incur VAT on probably um, uh, uh, electricity. Mm. Uh, remember, all this, these are inputs mm. to produce the juice. Yeah. Now, what you do is that whatever 18% is charged on all these, you will get the 18% of each of them, add it together to form what we call the total input tax. tax. Remember even when they are buying machinery, by the way, uh, they are charged VAT at the mm. point of importation. All that VAT is included in the input VAT. So at the point of selling, they now calculate the VAT they have charged their juice with mm. when they are selling it to the wholesaler. It basically means that there are situations where you find that the input VAT or the VAT incurred in the mm. production or distribution is much more than the VAT that someone is paying. Take an instance, mm. you purchase a machine of about 100 million, mm. okay? You find that the 18% of VAT there is about 18, 18 million. million. Yeah. Then you find that water, you have been charged VAT, you've been charged VAT on electricity and all that. You find that you have a total VAT input of maybe 40 million. Mm. By the point of sale, you find that when you charge VAT, mm. you have charged the 20 million. That's right. That's a deficit of 20. 20 million. Mm. That VAT is supposed to come back to you in mm. form of a refund. That is if you're zero rated. Yes. You're dealing in a zero rated. Zero rated or standard rated. By standard, standard rated, rated, I mean all the other items that are charged VAT. Absolutely. But when you're in the exempt category, ha, come back with them. Mm. 40 million, then you've incurred it. But who you're, you're, you're not charged. There is no ref yes. refund. But then there is no refund on mm. it. So it means that if you have that, then 20 million is supposed to be refunded to you. Mm. That is why URA insists that if you are registered for VAT, you need to have a fixed place where you're doing business. Mm. Because there is an element of refunding government money to you. 
if money, if the amount to be refunded exceeds five million, mm -hmm. you can be refunded that money in cash. If it is about five million and below, we always ask the taxpayers to push it forward to treat a future liability that emerges. Mm -hmm. Because remember, that is accounted for every month. Mm -hmm. So every 15th of the month following the month you're accounting for, you're supposed to account for that. You are in June. By July 15, you're supposed to account for June. Mm. We don't wait for you to have many months because that is money that you are actually collecting on the supplies. It is very possible that this VAT can get lost. Mm. That is why, better you see, people are complaining. They're saying, you see now, you are introducing the IFRI system. The system is trying to push us out of business. It is just that some people do not want to be honest. Mm. Because of the IFRIs, you stock in, you show the items that you're selling and the VAT that is off those items, okay? You show the items that you have purchased and the input VAT is actually indicated. You show the expenditures and everything is indicated. It basically means that it is a system that is looking at doing business with honesty, mm. which many of our colleagues and may not want actually yeah. to do. Mm. Because they say, ah, you are is looking so much into us. Mm. That is why some of them are opposing the system. Not knowing that the system is there to stay anywhere. Mr. Romanika, zero rating seems to be more preferable, especially for businesses. But you mentioned, for example, the goods that and services that are exempt. What are some of the goods and services that are zero rated? Zero rated. I mentioned them. There are mm. not very many. Mm. For example, education. Because it sounds like a very good deal. Yeah, it is a good <laughs> deal. But you see, government also puts a good deal mm. because it is looking at something. Sure. For example, if I zero rate education materials, mm. the textbooks and so on, it basically means that I want people to get more educated. There is a reasoning behind. If government zero rates seeds and fertilizers, we are basically talking about uh, encouraging farming. If government zero rates pesticides, mm. we are talking about farming. Drugs and medicine, we are talking about good health. If I zero rate exports, you know, mm. government would always want Ugandans to export more than they import. That's right. That would strengthen our currency, exactly. do so many good things. Balance for of our... payments. Yes. When you have more exports than imports, there's balance of... That is why government keeps encouraging. Mm. By the way, do you know? Now, this one is, is income tax. Mm. If, 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 you, if you exported agricultural supplies, when you add value to agricultural supplies and you export 80% of them, they even give you a waiver of income tax. Wow. So, what you see in the zero rate mm. of VAT is trying to encourage people to deal in those that particular because government is looking at a holistic picture. Mm. If we are talking about handling services, we are talking about cereals, we are trying to promote encourage certain sectors, certain sectors. encourage them mm. so that people can deal more in such sectors yeah. to be able to. To, to benefit more. But, you Absolutely. know, if an item is not zero yeah. rated, it can be mm. standard rated, charge it 18, mm. also claim the 18. It is also a good That deal. means you transfer that burden. Yes. Thank you so much. Let's take a very quick breather. When we return, did you know that you have a threshold of an annual turnover of 150 million for you to be, uh, you know, vatted or to be have vatted products? And that is broken down in two quarters or three months as we're going to get a deeper explanation after this very short break. My name is Anthony, stay with us, don't touch your dial. Driving business. Luxury redefined at Seasan Hotel. As you indulge in the splendor of elegant living, feed for the royalty that you are. Step into comfort pampering and blissful customer-centric service as you select from our range of comfy exquisite living quarters furnished to meet with your royal preference. Surrounded by scenic beauty, 
our tropical setting allows you to escape the glamorous odor of city life. Our ambient green gardens will guide you to a place of revitalizing rest. The three-star restaurant caters to your palate, serving your choice menu ranging from exotic cuisines to local delicacies. Our chefs will serve you full course meals for a truly out-of-this-world culinary experience. Our fully stocked bar to wet your throat from renowned global brand whisks, brandies, jeans, beers and wines to our locally celebrated beverages, you will not lack for any brewage. It's an all-new experience in the East at Seasun Hotel. So visit today at Plot 15 to 19 Spire Road Ginger or contact us on plus 256-751-719-960 and plus 256-785-354-614 for reservations. Seasun Hotels, luxury redefined. Say goodbye to paperwork and travel costs. Now every MTN customer can register to invest in securities anytime and anywhere with Zabu in a few simple steps. Step 1. Dial star 292 hash. Step 2. Select option 1. Register with Zabu. Step 3. Enter your full names. Step 4. Enter your national identification number. Step 5. Enter your national identification card number. In 24 hours, you will receive an SMS confirming your registration. Congratulations, you are now ready to invest. Is the question. We know where you No, you know why you know what we are all the discrepancies. But may you know what's a moon to get you to move on the side? If you be Muria, take a magic, power magic prime, ne power magic lock. Sigala ngo yungi duwako, ulabe ngeroza fenyovu, ngabikole duwa mungerie ya feyechi nasi. Smart 24, driving business. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. Now, value added tax, as we have explained, is as per any goods and services that are made in Uganda or manufactured in Uganda uh, that have some value added to them. And most of the goods here have value added on them. So they pay value added tax. We've talked about the three brackets, the exempt, the zero rated and the standard vatable goods. But who is uh, viable to pay VAT? And what is the threshold for paying value-added tax? There are requirements that every business should have in order to be able to pay value-added tax. And there are compliance issues that have to be sorted in case you do not pay your value-added tax. Mr. Lumanika, let's talk about the requirements and what it takes for someone to be able to pay value-added tax in the first place. Um, the requirements for someone to actually register for value-added tax, mm. uh, you know, there are two types, there are two ways of uh, registering. Of course, when you talk about paying, mm. uh, I married with the registration because it's after registration that you can, you can, can be in to charge mm. VAT and actually in position to pay. Mm. Now, for you to register for VAT, there are two ways. I'll start with the easier one, mm -hmm. which is the voluntary way of registration. By voluntary, I mean there are those taxpayers who would like to register for VAT because probably the persons they are supplying their items to mm -hmm. require that they are registered. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. For example, you'll find that someone is selling, uh, still taking the example of juice. Mm. You've manufactured your juice, mm. and then you want to sell it to mm. the big supermarkets because they have the bigger market. That's right. People are able to see your product. Sometimes you're able to, to put your product there, and uh, people enjoy it and begin asking for it. So mm. it's a marketing gimmick sometimes. Mm. So the supermarket will tell you that for you to supply me, you need to be registered mm. for that. Why? Do you know why? They do not want you to make them the final consumer. That's right. <laughs> because by picking items from you, mm. you're charging them value-added tax, which becomes their input value-added tax. At the point of selling this item to the final consumer, me and you who enter the supermarket, we are becoming the final consumers of mm. the value-added tax. So, they do not want the chain of collection of VAT to end with them by being the final consumers. Mm. So, they require that their suppliers be value-added tax registered. Now, so such persons will apply voluntarily mm. to register for value-added tax. However, you are put some conditions. One, you need to have a fixed place where you're doing business. You need to be a fit and proper person. Mm. You need to have demonstrate you are a, that you have the ability to file the monthly tax returns. Mm. Because value added tax can only be realized, you can only ascertain the correct amount of tax you're paying, the correct amount of input VAT you are going to, to claim by filing a return. So in the eyes of URA, or the person working in the URA, you should be a fit and proper person and ready to file your regular returns. returns. And by the mm. way, when you see making the taxable supplies or the valuable supplies, you store the register for another two years. Mm. So you keep filing, but filing nil because you're not you're no longer making taxable supplies. So that is the first way. Yeah. Voluntarily coming to register. Mm. The way we are seeing people voluntarily utilizing the IFRIS system. Mm. Because IFRIS was created to enable guys who are already on the register or guys who are supposed to be on the register or guys who are VAT registered. Mm. But we're seeing an uptake of many guys yeah. who are using it because it is a good booking, bookkeeping system. People are able to instruct the system to give them the details of whatever transactions they did. So people are saving on paper. They're saving on, um, on our employees. You know you can have an office and you have three clerks. All of them are filing paper. Mm. With the IFRS, you just patch in the system. You don't need very many people. So people are seeing all those advantages and they're saying the same price. The same applies to the value added tax for those who are operating under the voluntary arrangement and they want to register voluntarily. Mm. However, the other part is the compulsory registration. Compulsory re registration requires that you ought to be making one taxable supplies. Two, you need to have hit an annual threshold or turnover of 150 million shillings. What do I mean? That when you add up all the items you are selling that are supposed to pay VAT on them, either at a rate of zero or at a rate of 18%, all those sales you're adding up for the year total to 150 million. Mm. By sales, I mean they could be sales for goods, mm. they could be sales for services. Someone is in the service sector, and then when you look at the services that you're offering, your consultant, for example, mm. the consultancies that you're offering to these different agencies, you add up the amount you're going to earn, and or you've earned, and you, the amount equals to 150 million. Mm. It basically means that you're eligible candidate for VAT registration. Now we go ahead, the law goes ahead to break it further and say, if in the three consecutive months, you're making taxable supplies or vatable supplies of 37.5 million, 37.5 million is the quarter, mm. the quarterly threshold. So you get 150 divided by four, it comes to 37.5 million. So if you're making taxable sales of 37.5 million every three consecutive, and mark the word, Consecutive. So you add January, Feb, March, and the total sales you make in the items you sell or you produce is 37.5 million. Mm. You are a candidate for registration. And you ought to register. Mm. Because when you do not register 
and the URA finds out that you didn't register, it will register you and give you an effective debt mm. of that time when you were supposed to register, register. for that. Mm. So compulsorily, if you earn 37.5 million every three consecutive months, mm. or 150 million for the 12 months, you are a candidate of VAT registration, as long as what you're dealing in is a taxable supply. By taxable, I mean vatable supply. Mm. You're not dealing in an exempt supply. The ones that we saw yes. in the second schedule, mm. we are talking about the items either in the third schedule or the general items that are standard rated that mm. have VAT of 18%. So we expect you to register once you hit that registration mark mm. compulsorily. Mm. It's not optional. The optional bit is when you are below the threshold, that is when you decide to say, okay, let me register because of the good things I'm finding. Mm. But when you hit compulsorily, you're supposed to register for VAT. You're supposed to account for VAT, meaning that as you sell, charge VAT. Mm. Don't sell without VAT. I've, I've seen on the supermarket receipt, I, when it comes out, there's always that VAT. Yes. Because probably they are uh, earning are more, more than yeah, exactly. yes. But you see also, there are certain individuals who say, okay, I know I hit the threshold. Mm -hmm. They even go ahead and register. But then they begin issuing receipts. Mm. You know when you're VAT registered, you are not supposed to issue manual receipts. Mm. You issue receipts through the system, through the IFRI system. IFRI system, yeah. That's so the receipts and even the invoices. So as you invoice URA, maybe you are given a gig, mm. and then you're invoicing it, you invoice through the system. Mm. Because that is the system that was introduced and it is under law that whoever is on the VAT register should be on the IFRI system. Of course, ultimately, we're looking at extending it to the other people. But at the moment, register for VAT. Mm. If you hit 150 million or 37.5 million for every three consecutive months, mm. use the IFRI system, pay the taxes, file the return, which is filed every month by the 15th of the following month. Now, Mr. Romanika, if a person is dealing in a business that has all the four, the three brackets, when you look at a person has exempt, zero rated, and standard supplies. Yes. And uh, they, you said they can recover all their input VAT if yes. their exempt supplies are less than 5%. Yes. What does that mean? Uh, what it means that when you are dealing both taxable mm. and non-taxable, what we call exempt supplies, mm. if you're dealing in both, the law requires you to register, but for you to register, you apply the threshold on the taxable, on the vertebral supplies. So you first remove the exempt supplies, okay? And you took because out the zero rated exactly, and standard supplies exactly. only. For registration purposes, mm. we require you to only look at the standard rated or zero rated supplies, okay. what we call the taxable supplies. Mm. Now, if you're dealing in both exempt and standard rated, mm. we only require you to register looking at the threshold of the standard rated. Meaning that you could find someone is making 150 million, but out of 150 million, probably 30 million is exempt supplies. Yeah. Maybe 120 million is standard rated. Mm. That does not make you register because you actually do not hit the registration mark, except if you want to do it voluntarily. Mm. But now the other thing that mm. you asked, at the point of accounting for VAT, mm. There is what we call apportionment of VAT because as you incur expenses, let's take an example. You're dealing in standard rated, you're dealing in exempt. You have a place that you have rented, a commercial building, where you're conducting your business from. Mm. You're incurring electricity, you're incurring water charges, and many other charges that have VAT on them. But you're dealing in both standard rated and exempt. exempt yeah. What the law seeks out to clear is if you're dealing in both standard rated and exempt supplies, you apportion the input VAT. Mm. Because the VAT that you're incurring on the electricity is catering for two things. It is catering What's for the exempt and the standard. 
that. So it is gathering for two. Mm. So the law seeks out to iron out that mm. by introducing methods of apportionment that you're going to either apportion the input tax that is attributed to only the standard rated and zero rated supplies mm. or you're going to apportion it in a way eh, you apply a formula. I don't mm. want to go into a formula because sometimes <laughs> our people, yes. uh, some, our people may not comprehend some of these issues. Mm. But you need to apportion the VAT. That is what it basically it means. That apportion the VAT where you're dealing in both standard rated and exempt supplies. Mm. Now, the five percent you're making mention of, the law says that if the input tax, if mm. what you're dealing in under the exempt is less than five percent. Mm. It means that we allow you the entire input tax credit. You don't need to apportion because it is kind of negligible. Mm. You'll find someone is having 98% standard rated. Uh, maybe 1% zero rated. And remember 1% and 98, that is 99 standard rated because standard rated and zero rated are all taxable supplies. But then they have a 1% because maybe mm. within that shop, they put a mobile money service, which is Somewhere in the corner. A financial service, mm. which is zero, which is an exempt supply mm. under the bad law. So this is negligible. We shall allow you to claim the entire input mm. credit on all the supplies, disregarding whether it is standard rated or zero rated, mm. as long as it is less than 5%. What are some of the restrictions for the tax input tax claims? Because it looks like one of them is just the, that 5% window, but are there any other restrictions uh, in as far as the input tax claims are concerned for the exempt goods? Uh, it depends. You see the input tax credit, um, mm. um, the law basically just talks about apportionment of the input tax credit. Mm. And that is why it talks about the either you have the standard rated Either you have the exempt that are of a negligible value. Mm. The other restriction could be, and I've already mentioned, uh, if you're dealing in both standard rated and exempt, mm. at the point of registration, we only look at the standard rated and zero rated supplies, mm. meaning that exempt supplies are not considered because they're not vertible. And actually, someone who is purely dealing in exempt supplies is not required to register, even if they hit. 150 million because what they're dealing in mm. is not taxable under the law. So basically those are the restrictions that maybe one thing I forgot to to to, to respond to and you asked it earlier. The duty to register mm. arises when you hit the thirty seven point five million or one fifty million. Okay? So you're supposed to register within twenty days. Okay. Of hitting that Yes, when you hit that, mm. within 20 days, you're supposed to apply to register for that. Can't I wait for a year to reach the no. 150 million? I don't know why you wait for a year. Mm. It either talks about you, you, you know, the duty to register mm. yes. may arise when you have already hit the threshold mm. or when you expect to make. Because there are those guys who maybe win contracts in government. And uh, they expect to earn 150 million. So they can earlier notify yeah, yeah. you. They answer. can register. Yes. And for that, mm. the duty to register rises, you're supposed to register on the first day. Mm. Okay? On the first day of the tax period, okay? Preceding mm. that making of that supply mm. to government. For example, government gives you a gig, and the gig is to maybe. Uh, provide uh, consultancy services to one of its um, agencies. So you know government is going to pay you an amount in a year mm. that is either 150 or more. Okay? So under such a circumstance, you're supposed to register before you commence that contract. Mm. So the duty to register arises, okay? And you're supposed to register on the first day. Yeah. But if you have, if you have already made the taxable supplies the duty to register once you hit the 37.5 37. 37. yes or 150 20 days yes exactly. 20 days from that day exactly and mm. then you apply to register for vat what if that day comes because you said uh you want in the first three months 
to have hit that target of 37.5 million. Yes. So what if I, I don't get the target within the three months and then within the month, the fourth month, mm. I kind of hit the target. And I think you said on the 15th day, that's when you, you consider those returns. Yes. Am I, am I being non-compliant? But if you I don't see returns only arise when you have registered. Oh, yeah. That's right. Because remember, you have not yet registered. You're still finding out whether you're able to register or not. Mm. And for you to find out, you add the January, Feb, March. You add and you see... It is 33.2, mm. it is not 37.5. So you drop January, mm. you add Feb, March, April, you find that it is 34.5. Yeah. You drop Feb, you oh. go to March, March, April, June. Mm. You find that March, April, June, you've made 36. You're almost there, but you're not yet there. Mm. You drop it. Then you go to April, May, June. Then you find that April, May, June, you have made 38 million. Mm. So it means that you are eligible to register because you've exceeded the 37.5 million expect, expected in the three consecutive months. Yeah. Regardless of which month, mm. it could be January, Feb, March, Feb, March, April, April, May, June. So wherever you count and you hit. So once you realize that you've hit mm. the registration threshold, okay, on maybe 31st of June, Sorry, June has 30 days. Mm. 30th of June, you realize that you've actually hit the 37.5 million mark. So within July, you have 20 days. within 20 days now, you begin applying. To apply. Say that mm. effectively will register you on 1st mm. July 2023. That's right. And then when you register, would you begin accounting for that through filing the normal return? Are there any penalties for people that are found non compliant uh, to paying VAT? Yes. What are the penalties? Uh, the penalties for failure to pay, for mm. failure to file. For, to file, that's... Different. When you fail to file a return, mm. uh, you charged 200,000 shillings. Mm. For every month, the return remains outstanding. Mm. Every month you don't file that return, okay? You okay. charged 200,000. Yeah. So imagine you didn't file the return for the entire year. Mm. That is 2.4 million you're just donating. <laughs> from business yeah you're donating it to government mm. and remember i said earlier tax when becomes due becomes a debt to government mm. it is like government has lent you this money that is what it means wow. so two hundred thousand for failure mm. and if you fail to pay two mm. percent and for that it is compounded so two percent of july Mm. Okay, then the next month it is two percent of that, those two months uh, exactly. Yeah, talk about the financial year 2023 2024. Have there been any changes in the VAT policy? Oh, yes, yes, we mm. made amendments or so government made amendments mm. to to certain to the VAT law, okay. just like it does to many other laws, mm. and uh, from the exemption list, mm. government removed diapers. Okay. Cordon seed cake. Oh, why diapers? That's <laughs> uh, uh, that was a heated debate. Oh, okay. yes. The mothers were saying, you are a mm. government is insensitive. Mm. But uh, we all know, we, 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 we all know, uh, persons who use diapers, they cause harm to environment. Have you seen how our mothers dispose of yes. diapers? Yeah. It's terrible. They, were, they don't want to ban them. Mm. They just dispose them of anyhow. I have passed by a garbage, kind of unauthorized garbage collection center. Mm. And the most garbage that is there are diapers. That's right. No? Because you see, a diaper, a child can wear a minimum of like two a day. So just imagine the harm it would cause to the environment. Mm. So government, you know, tax is used sometimes to regulate certain things. So by increasing the tax, by adding it back mm. to the standard rate, probably a diaper that was costing 500 so will now cost 800. 800. Mm. And the one who wants to put markup will put it at 1,000. That's right. So for <laughs> you, you'll say, ah, now, for me to waste 2,000 shillings, mm. let me go and buy the nappies. Mm. <laughs> for, us, for us, we are children of nappies. For you, you found these diapers, but we are children of nappies. And your parents would wash them. Mm. Okay? Mm. So, 
it was because of the environmental factor that probably that one was added back. Mm. Um, then, in addition, I, on the exemption list, mm. uh, we added on uh, animal premixes, so okay. animal feeds, premixes, concentrates. You remember that heated debate on the concentrates? Yes. When guys were saying we are making chicken very expensive <laughs> by leaving tax yeah. on the concentrate, you know, all those things. So, it was added back to the exemption mm. list. Still on the exemption list is a supply of liqui re liquefied gas. Remember, people are using gas for many things. So that has, has been put on the exemption. Yeah, because possibly. now that makes it, mm. you know, when an item has no VAT on it, it, it is slightly cheaper than mm. when the VAT is there. So guys can even cook yeah. and, and other things. Um, then the auction of goods, okay, mm. is now a supply or it is a taxable supply. Mm. So when you're dealing in auction of goods, just know you are required to register for that as long as you hit the threshold of mm. 37.5 million. Uh, the other change was a provision to non-resident suppliers mm. to account and file returns in US dollars. You know, they're non-resident. So when you let them file in the Ugandan currency, mm. just imagine a company like um, that is offering digital services out of Uganda and required to file a returns and pay taxes in Uganda. In Uganda that it's kind of an inconvenience. Yeah. Then uh, on the first schedule, mm -hmm. the schedule that, um, uh, that has listed institutions, institutions that are not supposed to be charged VAT, mm -hmm. but even when you charge VAT in them, you are supposed, they are supposed to claim mm -hmm. the VAT. They added on um, an organization called ZEPRI. Yeah. Okay, it is a reinsurance uh, company, it was added on to that list. Um, they were well, yeah. I had forgotten one important one mm. on the payments made by taxable uh, mm. persons for entertainment for membership in clubs mm. or associations. Okay, mm. you know, these guys who have associations, clubs, societies, eh, golf club, yeah. eh, in the past, okay, mm. we're charging, we're giving, we're allowing them to claim input VAT on some of the items they consume while in those associations mm. okay but now what we are saying is we're not allowing any input VAT yeah anymore because you know when as you go to to enjoy yourself you, you don't you, want I to mean, you, you should pay the VAT why that's should, right that's why right. should we why should we give you an exemption so we <laughs> thank added you, Mr. Our yes. time is fast spent but thank you so much for the conversation on value added tax and we shall continue to have uh, more of these conversations thank you so much and um good evening viewers i wish you a very safe night thank you so much there you have it ladies and gentlemen my name is anthony catch you next time have a good night bye for now